Today on the farm, we've been in a weather holding pattern where we get a rain every Friday for I don't know the last month. And so it makes it where we can't work on Saturdays. But the good news is there is an auction not far away from the house. We're only about 45 minutes south, right down here where I grow my sweet peas at, close to the Florida line. And we're gonna check out these tractors down here and see what they're bringing. At this particular auction, they do all the auctioneering under a tent instead of having a truck that goes around amongst the equipment. I prefer to have the truck right in front of the equipment so the guys auction off while you're looking at it eyes on, you can see any issues, but everybody does it different. So here, this is, this is how they do it. What do you think, dude? You like that four six hundred? We actually have one of these tractors, a John Deere 430 on the farm, is uh, awaiting to be redone. We've actually sent the, got the hood really, really good and redone, got super clear cut on it, but we haven't finished redoing the whole tractor. So I'm anxious to see what this 430 brings, kind of compare it to one we have and see what ours is worth. I like these old Massey Ferguson. This guy right here, he's planning on doing a little bit of night work. And I'm custom lights on it. Doesn't drop his exhaust down below. I'm a heat shield on there. Don't burn his leg getting on. Oh, got the backlight too. Nighttime farmer. With no no drawbar. Look at there, dude. That is a good looking super C. A suspension seat. That is one of the cleanest old Fords I have ever seen. Down here where we farm at, about 90% of all the tractors you see are John Deere. But this particular sale, there's a lot of red tractors, a lot of orange tractors. I'm, I'm interested to see what some of these Massey Ferguson's and some of these cases bring. There's a whole lot of Kubotas here. But there's a few tractors like this. I'm going to show you another one here in a minute that I'm uh, highly interested in to kind of see where they're valued in reference to our green or their green counterparts. You don't see these uh, this size deer without a cab very often. Uh, kind of cool, kind of neat to see, see a mid-sized tractor without a cab on it. Mercer's fired up, boy. He loves loves tractors. This this is for Mercer. This is better than going to a toy store. This this is the pinnacle of what he loves to do right here. Check that out, buddy. Seventy-two thirty. That's a good one right there. 
<laughs> How many hours? Eleven sixty-four hours. Seventy-one thirty premium. Thirty-two eighty-one. Three thousand hours. Another clean John Deere. Couple good ones right here. Forty-two forty classic, classic John Deere, and then a seventy-four ten. Another good one. Not not in the best shape. No. But this is a pair no. of highly reliable John Deeres. John Deere 4030 with the bucket. 6610. Got a custom brush guard around the muffler. Got a belly pan to keep the sticks and limbs from coming up there and knocking the filters and hoses off. Fifty-five ten with the custom exhaust. Two hundred and forty-seven hours. That is a brand new tractor. Got some wheel weights on it. This is something you don't see very often, a Kubota with duels. So this is ready to do some actual row crop farm work. He's got a full set of weights on the front and duels on the back. I presume somebody's been doing some tillage, some legit farm tillage with these. In our area, usually Kubotas are mowing the ditches or something like that, or, or some uh, hunters or cattle guys got them. They're not doing actual row crop work, but this one is set up for actual row crop farming. It's pretty cool right here, y'all. This is something you don't see that often down here in the south. I'm excited to show y'all this big blue machine. People have commented some of the auction uh, videos about us getting on the tractors and, and cranking them up and seeing if they work, you no know, shifting gears and whatnot. And that's actually pretty common down here where we're at. You see this person down here using this excavator, uh, trying it all out. It, it'd be unwise to buy something at auction that you didn't try out. So pretty standard procedure in the South to get on the tractors, crank them up, push the buttons, pull the levers, see what works and what doesn't work. Big case magnum duels all the way around with a large bucket. But at some of these auctions, you'll see these newer series tractors like this. It's a relatively new tractor. It's highly unusual to see a farmer bring a tractor that new to the auction. A lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, it will be the actual dealerships bringing their used inventory out here to try to see what, what they bring. If they bring a good price, they sell them. If not, they buy, buy them back, take them back to the lot. A lot of big red down here. This is some of my favorite stuff right here. I love articulating tractors. And for your money, there's no better deal in the Southeast than to get an articulating tractor. They, they sell 
per horsepower, they sell cheaper than anything else in the South. One thing you have to consider if you're buying a uh, articulating tractor is whether or not it has a lift arm or a quick hitch. A lot of these tractors are just designed to pull like a dirt pan or something heavy. So a lot of times they don't have quick hitches or lift arms, which is crucial, crucial if you're going to farm in the southeast. You've got to have lift arms to use the type of equipment that we use down here. So when looking at these articulators, you got to find ones that have lifts. Two cases right here lifts. There's our articulating John Deere right there. No lift. All right, we're up in the cab of this big case Steiger articulating beast. This thing's an absolute hammer. What I like about it is there's almost no obstruction of view. You're up here really high, but it is glass wall to wall. Very little interference with your view in here. So you can got a large uh air field of view so you can see what's going on sometimes when you got a big tractor there's obstructions and you can't really see all the rows on your strip till or your planter or whatever you're doing your disc you can't see where a certain bearing is you can't know that it's going out or not so it's very important on these larger tractors to have a large field of view to have very few obstructions so you can see the implement you're pulling you can see what you're doing and know that you're not messing up relatively small control center here uh, a lot of the deer have stuff all through this area so you still got still got a lot of hey uh, yeah outside okay we'll go outside just a second a lot of unobstructed view to the side i like the hand controls you rest your hand here you control everything with your thumb very very ergonomic i like the design case got this right okay This is the deer counterpart to that case. Gonna get, do a little comparison here, see what the differences are. I like how clean it is back here with the remotes, easy to access, but again, we have no lift arms back here, so that severely limits what we can do with the tractor. We do have this part of the tank cut out to enhance viewing. So if that was straight across, you wouldn't be able to see your hitch way down here. But with that being cut out, the operator can actually see where the pull pin drops. And so you can back up, hook up to something without having someone back here in danger of getting run over or squash. You can see it from the cab where that pull pin falls. The deer cab, still very neat. Uh, not a lot of clutter here. I like how simple this is. This is very similar to a lot of tractors we run on the farm. But you see I have a much more obstruction of view here big fender out there all this stuff the case actually had a lot more unobstructed views large tanks in the back but i can see my pull pin if i look just right but i do have a lot of a lot more view obstruction in the deer the hood also on the deer more or less goes straight out but the case the hood tilts down so you can actually see in front of the case a lot better you have a lot of blind spots on these deer now i, I like this tractor i like I've, I've got a lot of time on articulating john deer in the field but you do have severely limited range of sight you have a lot of blind spots when you're on a big deer and if you got a little dude like this you don't want blind spots i have been accused on uh some of the videos and, and on other people's videos i comment on of uh, being an extreme brand loyalist i'm not a brand loyalist i like whatever gets the job done and so that brings me to this tracker i'm highly intrigued by this deutsch far john deere does own the southeast they have dealers in every town and so they kind of monopolize the industry but john deere makes good stuff this uh deutsch far very rare down here extremely rare i'm always interested in, in the open market as many new things as possible because that's how we improve i have more new and different choices so let's check this glitch out so the cab on these tractors that are more popular in europe uh the cabs on for instance everything that's not case and john deere are much smaller much much tighter cabs a lot a lot less at your hand uh, so all these controls just spread out over a huge area case and john deere have everything you need you can rest your hand in one spot and do everything the tractor does without ever moving your arm 
these foreign tractors oh, really? you got stuff everywhere to reach it's all close but there's no such thing as having your hand in a relaxed position with the deers in the case operating them becomes second nature you don't have to think about what you're doing you leave your hand in one spot and you can be watching what's going on behind you and you're using that hand up there without even thinking you're not having to find something to grab it's all at your fingertip and so you can operate the machine without stopping to look that's a lot more efficient however that said this is a pretty nice tractor i do like that they put in the glass down here so i can see a lot better what's going on right down there that, that's helpful a lot of the deers in case you know have, have insulation up to here and so you have a blocked view i like this a lot i frequently get asked how is the best way to get into farming or how do i get into farming people want to know how to get started i think this is the best way doing custom work so you see these large sprayers here there's a whole line of them a young farmer can buy a larger piece of equipment like this and do custom work and earn a living rather than trying to start out uh with a whole farm on your own you have to buy a lot of different pieces of equipment and get them all paid for but you can buy one large sprayer or one large combine and you can go out and pick for the public or spray for the public and you can earn a living letting the machine make the payments on itself by the acreage you cover and then anything over that acreage is direct money in your pocket so you start earning money right off the bat instead of borrowing a bunch of money to buy a bunch of farm equipment and potentially get money one day these machines like this are instant income for a young farmer and a good way to start farming This tractor right up here is actually the whole reason we come to this sale today. I've heard a lot of debate over whether the 4960 or a uh, boxcar Magnum were the greatest tractors ever made. I don't have any experience with a boxcar Magnum, so we come here today to check one out. 7,700 hours on this boxcar. What do you think, dude? Well, I tell you what, I may have to eat a little crow. I told some uh, viewers on the Barn Talk podcast that I, I watch, I subscribe to, there was a debate over the Boxcar Magnum versus the 4960, and they said the interior, the interior, not the whole package, but the interior of the Boxcar was superior to the sound guard, the John Deere sound guard tractor, such as the 4960. I'm believing those people may have been correct. The interior is better than what was offered on Deere at the same time. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, hear me out, that the red oh, tractor is no, better. I hadn't run the red tractor, know. I don't know. But I do think the interior is possibly better. You got a lot of hard plastic. Deere had a lot of soft, insulation that had a felt or a foam background that would deteriorate in just a few years so you're constantly replacing the interior on that deer every four fifth year it looks ragged and you replace it uh instead we got a lot of hard plastic in here that's more durable none of these older tractors had a lot of room in the cab but this one actually has more room than the 4960 not not it's not comparable to what kind of room we have currently in tractors but it is a lot more room than what was in the 4960 or, or the comparable deers at the time so in terms of who had the better cab in the early 90s i think these boxcar magnums they had it licked that is a kmc six row peanut picker is a little bit older model and this is a newer model colombo six row unload on the go peanut picker so this one has a lot of the bells and whistles that uh, kmc does not but it does the same thing this picks six rows at a time or three wind rows usually a pretty substantial difference in the price of this machine and that machine now i'm not saying they travel at the same speed and get the same amount of work done in a day what i'm saying is they both pick peanuts and they both pick the same number of rows of peanuts at the same time I believe the Columbos do a much better job. They pick them cleaner and they pick them faster and time is money. However, this is a six row machine and that is a six row machine. And let's see the price difference. 
for those of y'all less familiar with uh, farming, uh, a lot of these sprayers, the older sprayers, when they were smaller like this, would have a detachable tongue on the front. So if you're a one-man farm, you put this machine behind your pickup truck, hook it to your to the back bumper, you pull it to where you're going, and then you unhook it and take that tongue off the front. That way you have your truck and the tractor you're gonna be driving at the field. So if you, let's say, run out of chemicals or need to stop for lunch or whatever, something breaks down, you can get in your truck and go back to your shop or your house or the dealership wherever you need to go. You're not stuck out there on the broke down machine with no way to go. So a lot of times these older sprayers just have a super cool feature of having a hitch on the front of them so you can dolly them or tender them to wherever you're going. This is a, a Modest Industries cotton stalk puller. Uh, a little bit different looking machine than, than some of the stalk pullers you may have seen before or be familiar with, if you're familiar with cotton stalk pullers. But the basic principle is the cotton row passes right through here. That stalk gets pinched by those spinning tires and it spins it up out of the ground into the air where these choppers chop it up. And so the stalk will be cut into sections that long and incorporate into the dirt. If you just mow your stalks off, they're laying on top of the ground and they don't rot as quick. Mm -hmm. But if you chop them and incorporate them into the ground, they have good ground contact. They rot way quicker. And that's the key is to turn those stalks into mulch, get them rotting as soon as possible after we harvest our cotton. All right, Mercer and I have came and saw what we wanted to see today. We'll check in on some of the prices on things that hadn't auctioned off once we get home. We'll get on the internet and keep up with those items and we can place bids on the internet if we want to once we get home if we see things are going super cheap. But for now, we gotta get back to Blakely, Georgia to Peanut Proud and check out what's going on there. I thank all y'all for watching. Hope to see you next time.